under, under the Ba'athist rule. But they had just been shocked in awe for three and a half weeks. Basically, people, families were terrorized and traumatized. So they're not going to come out and welcome the invaders. Now these look, this image looks like there are masses of people there. But if you look closely, this man's arm is unusually long. And these areas in the back are very fuzzy and start to look uh, the same from place to place. Now it was determined, and the Evening Standard admitted, that they had doctored this photo. Now Reuters was there on that same day, and this is the photo that they took. Here's your celebration at El Firdo Square. The whole area was cordoned off by American military vehicles, and here's the US military vehicle right in the center that pulled the statue down. Here are your throngs of people. And they came in with the Americans. Now, I'm going to borrow the style that someone had on Facebook. This is a fake revolution. This is a real revolution, Tahrir Square in Cairo. By the way, I don't speak Arabic. Uh, my parents spoke English at home when I was little. My dad only used Arabic when he was angry, so that's not really appropriate this evening. So uh, just please uh, uh, bear with my, my pronunciations. All right, so I will tell you, now there are several factors that, that worked into why the United States wanted to invade Iraq, but uh, two major ones were right here, and I call it a perfect storm of special interests. Uh, the, these uh, actually operators had uh, uh, long-time uh, connections to Halliburton Company. Condoleezza Rice used to be on the board of Chevron. She actually had a tanker named after her, but once she became Secretary of State, they thought it would be more appropriate if they painted that over. <laughs> now, at the time that Condoleezza Rice was at Chevron, uh, Chevron was doing dealings with Unical, another oil company. By the way, Hamid Karzai, president of Afghanistan, has connections to them. But they also had a young executive working for them at Unical called Zalmay Khalilzad. <laughs> Zalmay Khalilzad got to be the U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan. Then he got to be the U.S. ambassador to Iraq. And as if Americans didn't look ignorant enough to the Iraqi people, we picked a, an ambassador who can't speak Arabic. That's brilliant. After that stint, he became the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. And his qualification is that he worked for Unical. So those are the oil interests. On the sides that are into Israeli interests were the Zionist neoconservatives. And there were other factors involved, and this is the short list, but people like Richard Pearl. Pearl was chairman of the Defense Policy Board, which is an advisory group to the Pentagon. Now, almost a third of the members of that board were tied to companies that got billions of dollars worth of contracts when we invaded Iraq. So there's a conflict of interest there. Paul Wolfowitz and Douglas Fife were undersecretaries of defense at the Pentagon. Fife was the third highest ranking civilian at the Pentagon, and he had to resign because his office, the Office of Special Plans, was being investigated by the FBI and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee because top secret information on Iran got leaked to the Israelis through his office. David Wormser was a special assistant at the State Department during the run up to the invasion, and the reason I'm telling you about these individuals is this. These advisors to the Bush administration were previously advisors as well back in 1996. And when they were advising the government then, they wrote a position paper called A Clean Break, A New Strategy for Securing the Realm. And in this paper, written by Pearl Fife and Wormser, they called for three major objectives. Number one, cut off peace talks with Yasser Arafat. This is 1996. Number two, launched military assaults on the occupied territories of Palestine, and number three, get rid of Saddam Hussein. Who were these three individuals advising at the time? Then and current Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now the American people are clueless that high-level members of our government used to be advisors to the Israeli government shaping Israeli policy. We should have that information. We should be asking ourselves, where does the loyalty lie? Does it make sense that Americans should send their soldiers 8,000 miles away to defend our national security? Or is it for somebody a little bit closer in the neighborhood? And now the jig is up. 
You have the Shilko, sorry about my pronunciation, the Shilko inquiry in, on Iraq at the beginning of 2010. And Tony Blair, now at least, at least you guys have gone through the motions of having someone come and testify. Our, our leaders, while this one was toothless, our leaders, and I use the term loosely, remain uh, completely without accountability. But Tony Blair testified at the inquiry that Israeli officials influenced and participated in the decision by the US and UK to attack Iraq. They were present at meetings that Blair had with Bush in Texas in 2002. And what Blair said was, so that was a major part of all of this. So occupation of Iraq is an extension of the occupation of Palestine, and Americans and Israelis are working in both areas. Uh, as for teamwork, uh, American-Israeli teamwork in Iraq, uh, the Israelis are training U.S. assassination squads in Iraq. Of course, this has been a long time tactic used by the Israeli forces uh, to establish death squads and the, I shouldn't have IDF, IOF, uh, occupation forces is the more appropriate term. But they were sent to Fort, Fort Bragg in North Carolina in the United States, which is the home of U.S. special forces. The Israeli military consultants have visited Iraq under the, under the guise of a security contracting company. And what they've, how they're advising the Americans is to seal off centers of resistance with razor wire, raising buildings from where attacks have been launched against US troops. That sounds familiar. That's what they do in occupied Palestine. American crowd control in Iraq. I know from my friends who are veterans uh, who have since uh, become active against the occupation that as they were instructed as MPs in Iraq, they used uh, concussion grenades, projectile bean bags, and rubber bullets. And that's the same thing the Israelis use as crowd control in Palestine. Now, uh, as you, many of you may know, the rubber bullets, it, when you hear rubber bullet, you think, I think, like a super bouncy ball. Not so much. Uh, they are rubber-coated steel bullets, and a uh, coated bullet does the same thing lodged in a child's brain as a regular bullet does. The war on terror that the United States and Israel are closely allied on is a war of illegality and we are, there's very many parallels to draw between uh, the conduct in, in that part of the world. The use of napalm, the use of white phosphorus, the use of depleted uranium, which is basically a nuclear weapon. I have more information about that uh, on my website. It's radioactive. The use of cluster bombs, the use of experimental weapons. Many times you hear reports uh, from Gaza in particular, uh, the medical reports of doctors seeing injuries and conditions that they have never seen before. And this is often the Israelis, uh, probably the Americans by proxy, testing out their latest weapons. And those include lasers and microwaves. House raids, daily house raids, uh, ongoing in occupied territory from Iraq to Palestine the uprooting of trees, the destruction of agriculture, and of course, the Israelis build a wall, and the United States Army uh, built walls in dividing Baghdad into ghettos, uh, just like the Nazis did in Poland. This is in Fallujah, this was an ambulance. The Americans did that. This is in Beirut, an ambulance. The Israelis did that. Now, by the way, just to make sure you understand, this is not X marks the spot. This is a red crescent ambulance. And this is, I know from my military friends, this is what's called a direct hit on a centered target. That's no accident. We destroy bridges. This is from the 1991 Gulf War. We Americans. And the Israelis uh, blow up bridges. They drop leaflets saying everybody must leave to save themselves, and then we blow up the bridges that they would leave on. And the victims have figured out what the problem is. This is in Iraq, you USA, terrorists to the world. Random, uh, random arrest, detainees have legal and human rights. Who is the terrorist? And in Beirut, they know very well that the Israelis are using military equipment that came from the United States. Condi, for Condoleezza Rice at the time, your bombs, nice gifts to our children. This was the assault uh, on Kana in 2006. The Mossad is operating in Iraq, the Mossad, the Israeli uh